I thank God once again for yes. being here. Hallelujah. For his grace is sufficient for us. Amen. Yes. He allowed us to travel here and be with you all on this evening. Amen. I thank God for Apostle. Amen. Amen. And his amazing wife. Amen. Amen. Let's give him up. Give it up for the leaders. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And for them seeing God. For him seeing God in me. Hallelujah. That he would trust the anointing on my life. Amen. To deliver a word to his people. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank God for the Messiah House Church and TMH community of churches. Amen. Glory to God. Who has traveled with me. Amen. They support their leader. Amen. I thank God for them. Amen. Amen. I thank God for my PNC. I call her my partner in Christ. Amen. Pastor Yvonne, amen. Thank God. For her, amen. I thank God for my son, my armor bearer, amen. amen. Pastor Governor Dixon, amen. Glory be to God. And last but not least, amen. I thank God for my bouquet. Hallelujah. Amen. The man of God who God has given unto me to work on side me in the ministry. Amen. Amen. My covering. Amen. Amen. There is a word for from the Lord. I thank God for the Hope in Zion Church. Give y'all my disclaimer. I laugh when I preach. Amen. So I want y'all to, to tell y'all, don't laugh at me, laugh with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's just my spirit. Amen. Amen. And the joy is of the Lord is my strength. That's my peace. I love Amen. him. Amen. So when you hear me giggle, just know that's just the anointing just shifting me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's go to the book, amen, of 1 Samuel. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 1 Samuel chapter 17. And let's take verse 8 and 9. And also verse 32 and 33. 1 Samuel 17. Verse 8 and 9, and then we'll skip over to 32 and 33. If you have it, say amen. amen. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. Let's go to verse 32 and 33. And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fall because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, <laughs> Thou art not able to go against this Philistine <laughs> to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. 
you may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, as I come before you with this word on tonight, Father, that you would have wonder to decrease, that you may increase in me. Oh, Father God, that this word may go forth, oh God, and every ear that's listening, oh God, may receive what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Holy Spirit, have your way now. Do what you want to do, sir. Move how you want to move, sir. Say what you want to say, sir. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The title of the text tonight is Facing the Giants. Facing the Giants. I want you to look at the very beginning of the text. Oftentimes we already know this story about David and Goliath. We know the challenges that David faced when dealing with this Goliath, right? This giant man as they would portray him to be. But when we look at the text in verse 8, here he is crying out and saying, first of all, if he defeat me, I will be your servant. But if I defeat him, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> Can I tell you something today? Without sugarcoating anything. That's what the enemy say about us. When we are facing our giants and situations in our life, his whole plan is to kill, steal, and to destroy. He will make it look good. He'll paint a picture for you and make it seem like it's okay. But his whole plan is to kill, steal, and to destroy. In the text, David goes to battle with this giant, Goliath. And so if we look at the text in our natural minds, we will begin to think that David would not be able to defeat this giant. Amen. Why? Because history says that nobody else has ever been able to win the battle against this Philistine. Let me paint a very vivid picture for you tonight. The reason that most people have not been able to defeat the Philistine is because they went in the physical. Come on, mother. David went in the spirit. See, there's a difference when I fight you physically because I might get tired. I might not be able to win. But if I go to battle in the spirit, come on, yes. come on right now. it's not me, but it's God. trying to fight a spiritual battle from a physical standpoint. Wow. We're trying to save the marriage from a physical aspect and not a spiritual aspect. We're trying to deal with our children from a physical aspect and not a spiritual aspect. We're coming in the church trying to rule God's people from a physical place and God is saying, I need some people who are willing to go low. Is it anybody in here that's willing to go low in this season? The reason that I need you to understand you have to go low is because in the low place is where the spirit begins to move. Why do I have to go low? Because when I go low, I get out of the way and he comes over me and he begins to fight for me. Come on, yeah. But if I stand too high, I can't allow him to fight. And so we've been fighting our giants the wrong way. Time after time after time after time, we think that we can change the situation. And God is saying, I need to get you to the place where you can depend on me. So here we are in the text. Goliath has a definite advantage against David. Why? Because the Bible has already told us that Goliath has fought since he was a youth. Years. But here the Bible said, now here's David who is a youth. Yes. 
to see about his brothers because of instructions by his father. Mm. Now his older brothers are already there. Y'all know the story. Yes. Jesse had all his sons lined up. He left poor David out there tending to the sheep and the lions and the tigers and the bears and all that stuff. They dressed up in the house. They counted him out. Samuel said, uh-uh. They ain't him. Move over, bro. You ain't the one. <laughs> I'm sorry, Apostle. It's just me. I be thinking about the word. They all lined up. Looking good, woman of God. They dressed to the nines. Come on. He said, now nah, move him out the way. He ain't the one. Here come the next one. Here come Jesse pushing him up there. You know how your parents do. <laughs> this the one right here. This the one. This the one going to graduate college. This the one going to make us rich. This the one about to bring us out the hood. This the one. That ain't him. <laughs> Sorry. That ain't him. Here come another one. Sorry. That ain't him either. Just the same. Wait a minute. Hold on. I done got all my sons in here. They took a bath. Oh, David never got a chance to bathe. <laughs> he said, Do is there another? Here, Jesse is, don't want to say. Yeah, that's a, it's another one. He's out there tending to the sheep. He's probably ruddy and he don't look too good in appearance. He's, Samuel said, That's the one. Send for him. Bring him on in here. Why? Because he did not understand that there was going to be a season when there was going to be a giant that was going to rise up against the other brothers that they couldn't even handle. It had to be the one who been in the presence of God. Come on. While David was out there tending to the bear and tending to the sheep, because I say he was tending to the bear because he was a whole killer out there. Yeah. Right? So while he was doing what he was doing, he was talking to God. Come on now. Hmm. Sometimes in your giant situation, when other people have counted you out, they don't know like Mary. Mary said, when I'm in the house, I'm down on my knees. You only see me when I'm outside, but I need you to come and visit the place where I've been in the presence of God. I don't really like the limelight, right? I don't like a whole lot of people. I don't like the TV. I don't like the radio. But it's study happening. Why? Because And it scares me. <laughs> because humility says this. It's not about me. It's all about him. So I don't want to get puffed up where people see me. I want people to see God. Every time you see me, I want you to know that I faced a giant in my prayer room. Yes, 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 yes. So I can come out and face a giant out here. I've been in the presence of God in my prayer room. Is there anybody in here? So that I can come out and face the giants in my life. Woo. How many of you need to face the giant in your life? How many of you need to bring exposure yes. to the thing that's been trying to take you out? Yes. Yes. Can I tell you today, if you tell that giant, I don't care what it is, I wrote down some things. When we begin to look at the book of Colossians, uh -huh. chapter 3, verse 5 through 8, it began to point out some things that may be your giant. Yes. Sexual immorality, uncleanness, inordinate affection, covetousness, fear, doubt, temptation, anger, malice, wrath, blasphemy, filthy language. I don't know your giant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know mine. 
But whatever your giant is, I dare you to face your giant tonight. And tell your giant time is winding up. You get your eviction notice tonight. Is there any landlords in the house that's ready to serve their giant and eviction notice? Not only was David facing the giant Goliath, there was also some giants in his life. If you read the book of Psalms, you can hear David over and over and over talking to God about the giants that had rose up in his life. Can I tell you when his giants began? His giants began when he saw that woman, Bathsheba, somebody else's wife. And the lust of the eyes caused him to sin against God by sleeping with Uriah's wife. But let me tell you something. When the giant come up in your life, it'll cause you to do some things, and now you gotta cover up what you've done with something else. Uh Now here is David. Not only is he facing the giant that he has the lust of the eyes. Uh The Bible talks about it, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These three things will cause you to kill somebody or have them killed. Here is Uriah who loves David. He comes back from battle and he loves David so much that he comes to his house and don't even go to his house to get any rest. David began to tell him, now you got to go home because he know he done slept with Bathsheba and he wants Uriah to go home and sleep with his wife so he can make him think that's his baby. Come on, yeah. Yeah, that's that's not it. Not. it happens today. Uh-huh. And because Uriah would not go home and sleep with his own wife, here David is, tell them to take him back to war. Yeah. Take him to battle. And when you get him on the front line, Draw back. Now Uriah is dead. And he winds up with Bathsheba. But now, here comes the baby. If you read your Bible, you'll understand where I'm going. Not only is he facing the fact that he had Uriah killed. But now he's going to God and he's fasting and he's praying and he's asking God to save a baby. Yes. Yes. Ooh. 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 That came by illegal access. Yes. Mm. Jesus. Yes. How many times have we asked God to save a relationship that we knew we had no business in? Come on. Ooh. My God, my God. But I thank God that he's still merciful. Uh, yes, yes. His you. grace is still <laughs> sufficient. Yes, How many times have we done something wrong and we came to God right after we asked God not to expose us in our... Yes. Oh, I'm talking about some giants. Yes. Not only did David have Goliath that he had to battle, but he was already battling with some things that he had on the inside of him. Mm-hmm. <sighs> later on, it hadn't yet happened because he's still a youth right now. But later on, after his experience, after all these things that God has done for him, he had the nerve, the mitigated God, to do what he did as an adult. Many of us have experienced some things even in our teenage years as children. And then when we became adults, we knew better. Right. But the giant that was in our life was causing us to see. Mm. So three things that I want to leave with you when you're facing your giant. Yes. Now we realize that David is in battle with this giant and David will win the battle. He, Goliath won't win this one. Mm. But the three things that I want to leave you with 
It's the three things that you must have in order to face your journey. Yes. Okay. Three ways. The first one is you must pray and seek God. Right. Prayer would slay any giant. <laughs> you got some giants in your life. I dare you to begin to pray. Before I even presented my text, I told y'all that I was facing 20 years in prison. And listen, I don't worry about people talking about the only reason she came to God was because she was on her way to prison. Yes, you're right. Okay. Because none of y'all could get me out of what I was in. And God told me how to pray in my hard time. Amen. So I ain't worried about you saying why I came. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm here. <laughs> so don't you worry about when people say, oh, the only reason he going to God is because he in jail. Or the only reason they came to God is because their marriage failed. Or the only reason they come to God is because their money messed up. Yes, you're right. Amen. Because you can't fix it, but the old song say, Jesus will fix it for you. He knows just what to do. Whenever you pray, let him have his way, and he will fix it for you. So the only, reason, the only thing I got to do is pray and seek his face. Oh, God. Point two, to, you must do to face your giant is stay in the fight. Uh -huh. yes. Be resilient. Uh -huh. Listen, I know it's going to be times when it's going to look like you're losing. Yeah. Yeah. But I tell you, if you stay resilient, uh -huh. you got to stay in the fight. I can imagine in David's mind, he said, God, listen, hold on. Yeah. I need you to really make sure that before I start this, you really going to show up? <laughs> because this is a big old joker right here. Some of the giants in your life is too big for you. But you got to tell God, I need you to show up on my behalf. Show up on my behalf. Woo! Yes. I need you to teach me how to have faith. Yes. And be resilient. Mm. Don't look at the size of your giant. Look at the size of your God. Yes. Resiliency yes. says that. I'm not worried about how it looks, but I'm worried about the outcome. Yeah. Yeah. How is it going to look in the end? See, it didn't look too good for me. I was on the news. I was on ABC, NBC. I don't know if I was on CNN. I just stopped watching the news. Let me tell you, I was on Facebook, Facebook, all them books. But listen, I tell you, God made an example of my story, and he redeemed my life. from it, I birthed a book. Come on, come on. Because faith does have a language. He told me to keep speaking faith over my life. He said, be resilient in your faith language. Change your language. If you're Chinese, you speak Chinese. If you're Portuguese, you speak Portuguese. If you're English, you speak English. If you in Paris, you say bonjour. You speak French. But God said, I need you to know the language of heaven is the language of faith. It don't matter how it looks, but I need you to keep the language of heaven in your lips. So I start telling them, I don't care how bad it look. I ain't going to jail. Then when it got to the end, I said, oh Lord, let me go and give everything up. I didn't get here. Let me tell y'all something because I didn't go through. I got here because I was resilient. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you can do the same thing. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. Yes. Take hold of eternal life which which you have been called. How do you know you've been called to eternal life? He said, because I go away to prepare a place for you. Uh -huh. That I may come again and receive you unto myself. Yeah, yeah. That where I am, you may be also. He said, don't worry about how I look. Be resilient. Because I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Will you be ready? That's what you got to ask yourself. Will I be ready or will I let my giants cause me to miss God? Ooh-wee. 
Number three, keep the faith. I just stopped by to tell you these three things today. Because if you keep the faith, what is faith? Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now, right this minute, your faith can move your mountain. Your faith can move your giant out of the way. Whatever your giant is that you came in here with, your now faith is the substance of things that you hope for, right? I have the confidence, I have the assurance that what I'm believing God for, right? Yes. It's coming to pass. I don't know who that's for. But I'll take it back if you don't want it. That's one thing. I'm known to take prophecies. If you don't receive it, I will. Listen, but God told me to tell you today that now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You might not see it now. Come on, Come on, But if you keep the faith, that thing you've been hoping for, that thing you've been believing God for, it's going to happen in your life. God is going to turn it around. And it's going to be turned around for your good. Yes. Woo, Jesus. When y'all begin to sing a song, we're blessed in the city. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. My baby died. He was 16 years old. August the 8th, 2011. This year, August the 8th, made 13 years. He's been gone. And listen, that was his song. And I still tell the God, tell the Lord, even though I went through with his death, I'm still blessed. Yeah. I'm still blessed. Why? Because it pushed me into purpose. It propelled me to do what God called me to do. Though he slay me, yet when I trust him, I'm going to wait until It's going to come. I don't know what your giant is. I'm getting ready to get out of here. But I don't know what your giant is. But I need you to tell your giant, you're not bigger than my God. Somebody's body needs to be healed. Oh, my, I'm sick of your shot. Somebody's body needs to be healed. And you've been facing the giant of defeat. That devil been trying to tell you you can't get healed. Because grandma had diabetes and grandpa had high blood pressure. And now it just runs in your family. I come to tell the devil, no, Isaiah 53 and 5 declares he was wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquities. And the chastisement of my peace was upon him. And by his stripes, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm restored. I'm made anew by his stripes. So everything is in his stripes. And before I take my seat, I want y'all to remember this. Mark 11 and 23 says this. I want you to speak to your giant tonight. He said, whosoever shall say unto his mountain, be thy removed and be thy cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart. David didn't doubt that he can beat the Goliath. David did not doubt that God one day was going to bring him out. He kept on crying out to God. He kept on telling God, listen, purge me with his son. Created me a clean heart, oh God. Listen, this heart that I got in me is stony. It ain't right. But I need a new heart. Somebody need a new heart. Somebody needs heart surgery today. And I ain't talking about from a physical place. I'm talking about a place where you haven't forgiven. He said, whosoever shall say unto his mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. He shall have whatsoever he saith. What is your giant today? That you want to cast into the sea. What is your giant today. That you want to tell. Oh I'm not going home with this same thing. That I came with. I've been battling with you over and over. And over again. Not today. This is my last day dealing with this. I'm going to give it to God. Just know if you face your giant. God is going to meet you right where you are. Yes Lord. Yes Thank you, God. How do I know? Thank you, Jesus. 
because even Jesus has to face his giant. Oh, thank you, Lord God. Thank you. When Jesus was preparing to go to the cross. Thank you, Lord God. He said, if it be thy will, remove this cup. But nevertheless, not my will. There was a giant in his life. He knew what he came to do. But the giant on the human side of him had to bow down to the spirit that was in him. And when the spirit man rose up, he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So if Jesus had to face this giant and he carried the cross for all of us and he said I'm going to bear this cross the songwriter said must Jesus bear this cross or no and all the world go free there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me cross that you carry in is your giant. Everybody standing all over the building. I want you to take inventory over your own life. And I want you to tell the giant that's in your life. Today is the last time that you don't bother me with this same thing. I had to tell that giant of gossiping no more. Years ago, I didn't even realize that I was gossiping. Sitting in the church and laughing at people and stuff in my heart that wasn't right. Getting on the phone after church talking to people some people got to tell that spirit of gossiping no more. That giant got to go. Some people dealing with generational curses. Some things that you've been dealing with from generation to generation. And I believe today if you tell God, the book stops with me. And you begin to cover your children your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. And face the giant that the enemy told you it would always be like this. Somebody has a poverty mindset. They don't think that they can come out. Don't think that they can have a nice house or good credit or a nice car and not be in debt. But I come to tell you, tell that giant, not no more. Not no more. Somebody is battling whether or not they're too old to go back to college and get a college degree. And the giant of your age keeps showing up. But I come to tell that giant today, no more. Somebody is facing the giant of lust and pornography and I'm just calling it out. And you got to tell that giant, no, no, no more. I exchanged that tonight. I want to give my life to God and I want God to take this giant away. Can I tell you something? You don't even have to fight with it. He said, if you ask it, you receive it. If you give it to me, I'll take it. So every head bow. And as that giant is on your mind right now, we're going to pray corporately. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you right now. God, we glorify you, God. Father, you are Elohim, God. You are the Almighty God. You are El Shaddai, God. 
Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. God, we thank you, God, that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Father, we thank you now that even right now, God, as all of us are searching ourselves, oh God. Father, and the giants that we have been facing in our lives. Father, give us the strength to overcome. Father, we lay them at your feet, oh God. Father, we ask, oh God, that you will purify us afresh right now. God, that you will take these situations and these circumstances and these thoughts and these feelings, God, and transform them into the newness of you. Father, I ask God that you would touch every individual here today. God, renew their spirit, oh God. Father, strengthen us for the journey, oh God. Father, whatever the situation is that we have come up against, oh God. Father, we ask, oh God, that you will bring it subject under your anointing. Because we know that your anointing destroys every yoke. We claim it done right now. Father, our faith is in operation, but your word declares that faith without works is dead. So, Father, as we have called those things out to you, we have faith to believe that you would do it. But, God, we're going to do our part also. That we, you will help us, oh, God. That you will strengthen us. Ah, oh, God. 